It started with a simple question. How is someone able to make this? It is absolutely awe-inspiring. This was made in the 1300s, way before satellite imagery, before the Renaissance. I have trouble accurately placing a single city on a map, but this? Thousands of cities? Hundreds of ship paths? How was someone possibly able to pull this off? How were old maps created? For some reason, some people aren't obsessed with maps. I don't know why. To quote, I think maps to me are the ultimate display of all the information I love. Maps opened up the world. They transform a place from here be dragons to here's a whole new society. They literally shape the path to growth. They go all the way back, showing local rivers and distant lands. Homer was the first person we know to have described the world. That doesn't feel right. There we go. And Homer just sort of made it up. Other poets followed. Ancient guesses describing the world are wild. The Greek Anaximander, I'm sorry for these pronunciations, I hope I'm not butchering them too badly, was the first person to publish a measured, detailed description of the layout of the world. Here's a reproduction of what he described. It was believed that an ocean circled the world. But even this was an incredible accomplishment, roughed out by who knows how many explorers. Over time, the ancient Greeks figured out the Earth was a sphere. They looked at the Earth's shadow cast on the moon, saw ships lower on the horizon, and also observed how constellations were different depending on where you lived. As explorers and conquerors like Alexander the Great expanded their reach, the Greeks and then Romans slowly honed in on each area, getting the borders more specific, the details more in place. Strabo in Geographica says he built off of the works of his predecessors, as well as his own constant treks. Pomponius Mila, a Roman geographer, continued to build on that. He wrote De Situ Orbis, an incredibly dry text that described the world as they knew it, section by section, drawn out in this recreation. This book set the foundation for the next 1,500 years. Marinus of Tyre was the first to think of how best to depict the globe on a flat surface, called equirectangular projection. He invented latitude and longitude lines and mathematical geography. Also, he put China on the map for Romans. Ptolemy built on this. His great work, Geographia, used the latitude and longitude lines to index the location of basically everywhere. And he popularized putting north at the top and east to the right. If you only learn two ancient map makers, and why wouldn't you want to learn that? Strabo and Ptolemy are the ones. Ptolemy did make plenty of mistakes, like miscalculating the size of the globe, which didn't bode well years later for Columbus, who used his measurements as one of his motivations to sail across the world. In the West, the next major innovation happens about 600 years later, when Islam is going through its golden age. By the 800s, Muslim cartographers had gone through Ptolemy's Geographia and fact-checked the 2,400 locations. They reconstructed the lost maps, projecting the world upside down from how we view it now. Over the next few hundred years, they calculated the size of the Earth by developing new trigonometric methods. Based on that, Al Biruni had theorized in 1037 that there was probably another unknown landmass on the other side of the world. It's just a big old waste of water otherwise. By 1154, Muhammad al Idrisi had created this, again, upside down to us. Building on existing maps, he paid draftsmen to explore new areas and estimated the Earth had a 23,000-mile circumference, which is pretty close. He charted it out in 70 sections, to quote, For three centuries, geographers copied his maps without alteration. al Idrisi's Nuzat served as a major tool for Italian, Dutch, and French mapmakers from the 16th century to the mid-18th century. Meanwhile, in Europe, they were still making maps of the world that had more in common with this than with anything happening in the Muslim world. This, in the year 1300, was their idea of a reasonable map of the world. Don't get me wrong, Mapamundis are awesome, but they didn't come anywhere close to breaking boundaries and expanding the collective knowledge when compared to Muslim advances. But the invention and popularization of the compass on ships in Europe revolutionized exploration. For one thing, it meant these maps weren't going to cut it. In the 1200s, portolan charts started to be made. These were nautical maps that told ships how to sail from one place to another. Here's what they looked like. Oh, hold on, this looks like garbage. Let's color in the water, rotate it. There we go, that's a map. They showed Windrose lines, the 16 directions, later 32, on a compass that a mariner could go. These lines are named after the Compass Rose, AKA 
the windrows. So now you have these increasingly accurate drawings of the world on the Muslim side, and on the Christian side, these game-changing charts of how to travel by sea. And there was an evolution to merge this information, which finally brings us to the map that kicked this all off, the Catalan Atlas. It was made by the Majorcan Cartographic School, a, quote, collection of predominantly Jewish cartographers, cosmographers, and navigational instrument makers. It's interesting that they were mostly Jewish, as it put them in a unique spot to dip into both the Christian and Muslim world. So they were able to help combine the knowledge of both groups. In 1375, Abraham Kreskis and his son made the Catalan Atlas. They were commissioned to make a set of nautical charts that would build on everything created so far, and also incorporate new knowledge, like working in areas Marco Polo had recently explored. What makes it particularly notable is it was both accurate for the time and towards the end of an era when little elements, gorgeous illustrations, were still woven in, like Kublai Khan, Alexander the Great, Mansa Musa, the Starbucks mermaid, Noah's Ark, the crossing of the Red Sea, and so, so many other flourishes. It's just really pretty. Even the lines are fascinating to look at. Showing the first compass rows, it's set up with a few center points, each with 16 points around them. There are 32 lines coming out of each of those points, which they needed to measure out incredibly precisely. If any of them were even a bit off, the airs show up. When done right, the beautiful patterns emerge. So how was this map made? It was the culmination of going from text describing what was where to more and more accurate guides based off of the work of an unbelievable amount of explorers and endless treks. And it was built on the shoulders of copying older maps, each built up in an effort for more accuracy over the course of thousands of years. Yeah, this map is truly awe-inspiring. Please like and subscribe, leave comments, questions, all that junk helps. If you'd like a tour of the Catalan Atlas section by section, check out the YouTube channel Flashpoint History, shown here and linked below. He does an amazing job of going deeper into the various continents, showing what was known and, more interestingly, what was not. Thanks for watching.